What is going on everybody? It's Alex coming back at you with another video and today we are doing round five of five of this mock draft. Alright, so um, a lot of you guys liked the video I posted on Christmas because obviously didn't have that much time. This video we're going to try to keep a little more simple, a little bit quicker, just to have a little bit more fun because uh, again, I, I know you guys are fine with me posting hour long videos, but it, it is very time consuming, especially for having to upload it to YouTube because it's already 4.30 and you already know how, how dark it gets outside, so... That's why we got the light on. But without further ado, let's kick into this. Um, I love all the support you guys have been giving me. It's really great. I was afraid that you guys would like try to kill me for trying to post the video I did on Christmas. But, you know, you guys uh, understood that I was just trying to help out. And I was trying to give you guys some fun content. So, glad you guys did that. Now, alright, Jags, we've given you guys an A-plus draft. Straight up, I don't know if you guys need anything else. The entire draft. Right? Uh, we could get you some extra wide receiver depth. I mean, you can never go wrong with some extra wide receiver depth, right? Could get you some extra corner depth if you want. Uh, don't really need it, again. But, I mean, if you want, we could be getting you guys a scat back. I know that, uh, I mean, James Robinson's an absolute stud, right? But I'm not 100% sure who you have behind him. I'm really not sure. Uh, I know TJ Yeldon used to be on the squad. I'm not sure if he's there if he's there anymore. But Javion Hawkins could be a fun little dynamic piece. He's a track star from Louisville. He will he will probably be in the four threes. So if you can have him out there, he could be a lot like a Lynn Bowden. If you guys want to look at him that way, just um this very fast, very dynamic re uh, receiver slash running back hybrid. Honestly, let's have a little bit of fun. I hate seeing seeing Javion fall this far anyways. He's going to be going right here to the Jags just to add, just to be able to take off some reps from Robinson and allow him to last a bit longer in the NFL. And uh, Cheeseheads, let's just get you let's just get you some interior offensive line help. Uh, we've gotten zero line help for Aaron Rodgers and of course the line, I mean, it doesn't always it doesn't really need that much help, but to be fair, I mean, it's just best player available at this point and the Cheeseheads after trading back, they're going to be wanting to get some value there. Bengals, you could really, you really do could, like, you really do could, uh, you really could use maybe a uh, a third wide receiver. And honestly, Justin Ross wouldn't be a bad choice here. Like, if we really want to go, like, shooting for the fences, it wouldn't be a bad idea because you don't need a third, right? But Justin Ross, if he comes back from his uh, spinal injury, he could be, like, realistically your number one wide receiver. So, honestly, this is just a, you know what? We have Joe. We can, we have time to develop. Let's get some Justin Ross in here. Why the hell not? It's great value. Honestly, if if he gets taken in the third round just from pure projection of, like, him actually coming back and being 50% of the man he once was, that's understandable. Now, uh, Raiders, where do we go with you guys? Let's see who's on the board because this could be an interesting trade back spot. But then again, we did not get a free safety. That's something that's interesting. I thought, I swear to God, oh, I, that was a nice voice crack. I swear to God that we got Richie Grant. So let's check back in the third round here. I'm make, I'm like crossing my fingers that we did not, um, that we did not like straight up hit the back button and the entire draft. Oh, the Patriots got him. That's an interesting one. I like that. Now, Raiders, James Wiggins. Uh, he's probably not going to be your type of guy, but I mean, to be honest. I mean, yeah, he missed with some ACL injury. So he has some injury concerns. And, of course, with Abram at your safety, you kind of are a little bit worried about that. However, I think, honestly, if you guys want him to, he is six foot two hundred five. I think he could fill in the role that LaMarcus Joyner is, like, kind of leaving right now. James Wiggins, I mean, Cincinnati is one of the most, if not the most lethal secondary in in football right now. Like, uh, obviously, I'm pretty sure that, like, uh, Alabama secondary is going to be better, but... For the competition they're playing, I think it's the best value you can get. Honestly, there's no reason to trade back. You might as well just get uh, take a shot on a very, very high floor safety in James Wiggins. Cheeseheads, do you need another player here? Uh, I don't I don't think so. There's guys like Ardarius Washington on the board, and to be honest, I know you I know you freaking Niners fans don't like it, but you guys are gonna be trading up for Ardarius Washington. I like him, man. Maybe he's not gonna be the most amazing player in the world, but you know, it's somebody who could fill in a need. And yes, like, you don't exactly need him. I'm trying to find the Packers. I'm bugging. Uh, but why the hell not? And you guys are like, ooh, what's up with the seventh rounders? I'm like, dude, this is all mathematical model, guys. This isn't my doing. I'm not saying, dude, this is exactly what the pick should be worth. This is I'm just plugging in what picks should be where. 
and we either need some guard help or we need some safety help. And right now we're going to get some Ardarius Washington up in this piece. Number two safety in the entire uh, country last year, next to, of course, his buddy Trayvon Morig. So Ardarius Washington is a guy who has a pretty pretty good track record, and I like him a lot. Now, next pick, uh, we should probably get some edge, like with the how good the edges are. Like with, of course, D'Angelo Malone. Isn't he like 6'7 or some shit? Uh, he, he's only 6'4". I, I was bugging. Um, but Dalen Hayes here is going to be a perfect fit. Let's just check his weight to see if he can actually fit on that line. Two, about 270. He'll be about 275 in the NFL. Uh, I think he's going to be a great fit. He can learn from J.J. Watt because his career can't last that much longer. Even if it lasts a couple years longer, it's like you still need some dudes to rotate in there and be able to have some youth on the defensive front. At this spot, I would love to trade back with the Browns, but, man, there's some good guys here. There's some really good talent on this board, and you could definitely use that interior defensive lineman uh, type of build right there. And with how much the Steelers like to run, and with how much the Ravens like to run, you kind of want to plug that center. Much that I love to Daryl Slayton, Chris Tonga is just a space eater. Uh, my comp for him right now is uh, Damon Snacks Harrison. So basically getting Snacks Harrison in the fifth round is a pretty good deal. He's just a dude, like, you could see when BYU, um, he, when he couldn't travel with BYU, that one game they got ran all over. So Chris Tonga, like, there's a, people, the def offensive coordinators realize when he's gone. There's a, he has an actual fear factor there. I think that's absolutely amazing. Let's stick with it. Now, Vikings, where do we go with you? Uh, we could be definitely going with Jeremiah Moon here. Ronnie Perkins is a little disrespected right now, but uh, let, let's check out Jeremiah Moon's age. That's something I, He's a redshirt senior. So, uh, again, maybe we don't need to do that. At this point, I mean, yeah, you guys have been dealing with pass rush issue forever. Like, forever, forever. Like, this entire year. Uh, you used to have an amazing duo right there in Everson Griffin. And, I mean, obviously, we don't. I'm not even going to talk about the other guy who is just scary, and Daniil Hunter, he's just unreal. Ronnie Perkins is going to be able to stick in there and be able to be a solid threat right there. Honestly, just get some extra pass rush anyways. Ronnie Perkins, along with Nick Benito, who we're excluding from this draft class because TDN is absolutely barf-worthy, disgustingly underrating him. Uh, Ronnie Perkins is going to be the pick here. Next, Steelers. Uh, where do we go with you guys? Where do we go, Steelers? Uh, we're not trading back, all right? We're not. right? We're not doing that. We could be losing Juju Smith-Schuster this offseason. So we could use a heavier, bigger wide receiver. I think that it's time to reach for a guy who is... I mean, yeah, he's a little bit lighter. However, he is as good as uh, Smith-Schuster is. I'm going to be going for the North Carolina man himself, Deami Brown, to be able to replace Juju Smith-Schuster... As more of that possession style wide receiver, because dude, Deami Brown is so fun. Like you guys might be saying, like, oh, he's in the two forties, dude. I have this dude up in the one hundred territory. I love Deami Brown. He is so awesome. Anybody who watches uh, UNC will love. Like they know how much they should love this kid. Now looking at the guys who are available, like yeah, Steelers could have traded back there and still gotten Deami Brown, but Steelers ain't gonna take a chance at that, especially when I'm drafting here. Um, like, looking at the guys who are available, is there any team that needs a tight end? Not really. I, the Jets are not going to be trading for fucking Nick Eubanks, for Christ's sakes. Uh, Jeremiah Moon would be an interesting one if we want to add him to the Lions, but we've seen how many times Matt Stafford has gotten injured. And I'm telling you guys, it is bad. It is scary. And to be honest, we're going to be rocking with Tommy Kramer here. He's, I mean, MP has been a really good guy as well, as well as Hainsey. But we don't, I don't think they need a center because Ragnall has been one of the best. Let's get his true guard in Tommy Kramer just to fill in and be able to protect uh, Matt, Matt Stafford back there. Now, of course, Cheeseheads, we're back again. So where do we go with you guys? Could we get some extra depth? That wouldn't hurt too much at all, right? Wouldn't hurt too much at all to get some extra tight end depth or maybe some tackle depth. But let's check out the guys who are here. And Myron Cunningham is still here as much as you guys hate me taking tackle, but it's the fifth fucking round, dog. <laughs> you get Myron Cunningham. That's going to be a great pick. Now is the time, the perfect time for a guy like Jeremiah Moon, high floor player, to go onto a team like the Broncos. I know we're like flying through the picks, but again, it's just, it's a high floor player from, it's like Florida, they do, I mean, you guys know what Florida is all about. Jeremiah Moon's going to be a solid, solid pass rusher. Might not be a starter worthy, but that's what you do in the fifth round, man. Uh, you just get some guys who have good value and are able to make a big impact on your team. And Jeremiah Moon's going to do that. He makes an impact at, at Florida, so... Who says that he can't do it over in the NFL? 
and learning from really good talents like Nick Chubb, as well as Malik Reed, as well as Vaughn Miller. He's just going to add some help in that rotation right there. Uh, Jets, where do we rock with you guys? Uh, you guys could use a tight end. So this is where Nick Eubanks is going to go. All right. Nick Eubanks is going to be a solid guy right here. Might as well. It's like it's just at this point where you're like, all right, cool. Like, I mean, I'm, I'm so happy that we don't have, um, what's his name? Kenny Yaboa at this spot. So I'm happy about that. What I'm not happy about is the fact that my computer fan is starting to go off. It, it, you guys already know. You guys know. I don't need to describe it. But at this point, um, I do this every time for uh, the Vikings. They need a true quarterback to just be good enough as a backup, man. I'm telling you. Brock Purdy's going to be stepping in. I'm telling you right now, Brock Purdy's stepping in, and he's going to be taking over. Uh, he should be a first-round type of player as of the start of this year. Shown that he has some big flaws, and Brees Hall is, is carrying him. But, man, he has very high potential, especially for the fifth round. Somebody you don't pass on. I could see him going in the third round to a team, maybe like, uh, maybe like the Vikings even. Now, Patriots, where do we rock with you guys? Um, you guys could use a scat back. Uh, Kylan Hill is definitely an interesting prospect. I, I'm pretty sure that he's much more of a contact balance back, if we're going to be honest. 215 and 5'11", I think, more of a contact balance back. We don't know anymore. These running backs are built like crazy-ass MFs. But to be honest, looking at what is kind of a need, we could get some extra edge presence in there. D'Angelo Malone is going to be an interesting prospect. He's an outside linebacker, obviously, at his weight. So um, it's going to be a project, but... Who is better with the project than Bill Belichick? I think you guys are re-signing all your line. So getting D'Angelo Malone in there is going to be really key. Again, you don't need tackle. You have a Wainu. He's being a beast. I think that you guys are perfectly fine. Uh, D'Angelo Malone is going to be a nice little prospect pick there. Now, Marlon Williams is still here. I still have no idea who the hell this guy is. Somebody I really need to look more into at UCF. Um, again, I might, I'm going to be looking over a lot of games in this offseason. That's why we're going to be updating the mocks. Maybe not every week, but... You know, we'll, we'll be doing it much more consistently. Oh, my God. The hair is the hair's a mess, guys. The hair's a mess. Now, uh, Pac, what can we do with you? We can get some extra tight end death with Trey McKitty here um, or Jeremy Rukert. But, I mean, looking at what's available, like, can we just get some extra line depth, linebacker rotation? Like, why not? Gayo Teote? Oh, my God. How, how the hell did he fall? Uh, Gayo Teote is a very solid linebacker, very high floor linebacker as well. I think of him a lot like... Uh, um, no, what's his name? Uh, Alex, no, it's not Alex Martinez. Uh, it's Blake Martinez. Alex Martinez, I think, is in the NHL. Uh, Blake Martinez type, where he's just a very high floor dude who's maybe not that great in coverage, but he's definitely solid in the run game. And it steals him from a team like the Bills that could definitely use a guy like that. Now, the Bills, we all know they like to run. And they ain't trading back from this spot because Cade Mays is here. I love Cade Mays. He's a heavy run blocking Tennessee guard slash center. I'm not 100%. I'm pretty sure he's a guard, right? Um, let's just check out on that. Uh, he, we have no idea. He can fit either. All right. Regardless, he can definitely play that guard spot that, uh, Cody Ford hasn't really been able to play. We still have guys like MP in here, Hainsey in here, who are really good centers as well. Uh, Jim Morrissey, even he's a pretty solid player. Like there's some very, very talented linemen still on the board for teams that might want to use one, but Cade Mason is going to be a great pick here. Uh, Vikings, we could use some extra cornerback depth. I mean, it, it's just depth. Keith Taylor is going to be a fun guy to add to your squad just because it's a Washington boy. Who cares about what? Like, they're they're amazing. It's Washington kids. Uh, Washington football team, speaking of Washington, uh, I guess you, uh, yeah, you guys definitely need to get some corner back depth because you guys only have, like, two corners left on contract after this year. So, boring, but we're not trading down here. Lenore has been pretty consistent over his career, and he's improved his draft stock this year. Definitely worth the pick. And even the Cardinals, like, we could go for more of a bruiser back because we got uh, more of a scat back in Michael Carter. I think we can do that. Let's get a bruiser in Kylan Hill. You know, obviously you have Edmonds there and you can have a good like running back by committee. But to be fair, I think Edmonds shouldn't be there after next year anyways. And then Kylan Hill and Michael Carter can just go off running with that ball. Pun, I guess, intended. <laughs> but um, yeah, they're going to be a very dynamic duo there. A heavy power back with good contact balance, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, yeah, muscular, round legs, stout. Like, obviously, you guys can, if you guys want to, you guys can wait for a Larry Roundtree, but I think this is going to be a great pick. Honestly, just straight up, it's a good pick. Uh, Vikings, Vikings, oh my god, it's a long day. Uh, Raiders, where do we go with you guys? We guys, I guess we can get some extra, like, I, I don't know, do you want to get some line depth? You're, I, I guess, like, do you need some line depth? <laughs> There's not really too much that's wrong with this team. 
realistically. Let's get a twitchy cornerback here. Jack Jones out of Arizona State. He's fun. Uh, very fast, very agile. You know, I need to do some more tape study into him, but uh, he, he looks pretty fun. And at this point, you look for guys who have a lot of potential, and I'm sure Chucky's going to take him in round one. So Jack Jones out of Arizona State is going to be a fun guy to have. Now, Patriots, uh, you guys have absolutely no needs. We're going to be going Marlon Williams, best player on the board. Like, realistically, it's the best player on the board. So, I mean, according to TDN, I, I'm not going to disrespect him as much as I want to because I don't have Marlon Williams in my top 300 or maybe my top 200, but, I mean, here he is, and TDN loves him. So I have to do more tape study on him. I'm going to let it become in the middle about, like, 162 for uh, Marlon Williams to go to, uh, of course, the Buccaneers, as, of course, I get notifications because my car is getting delivered way too early. But, uh... Let's go with the Browns. <laughs> Browns, where do we go with you guys? You guys could always use some extra interior linemen. And again, we're not doing any trades right now. Uh, we are doing trades, but this is not going to be a trade. David Moore out of gambling. You just don't take a shot. I mean, you can uh, you cannot just like let that pass. So now we have some guys like Jordan Williams so for teams that really need interior defensive linemen. And again, this is a spot where you start taking best player available. And that's really going to be where it's all at. So... Um, is there any team that could use a tight end like Trey McKitty? Uh, you can look at a team like the Steelers can even trade up for a guy like Trey McKitty, which is something I could see happening, something that might happen in a second. We'll, we'll see what happens. Uh, there's still Jarrett Patterson on the board who is uh, not disrespected. He's probably about where he should be because we don't know how well he's going to project into the NFL. Obviously, when you're playing against like bums, you can kind of play well, but he's playing really well. However, oh my god, the hair is a mess, guys. All right, we're not even going to focus on that. There's like Tadero Slayton and Jordan Williams on the board, man. Like, it is it is tough to like let those guys like slide at this point. Ooh, it's, it's weird. It's weird. Uh, somebody that, something that's interesting is the Chiefs have a lot of picks. So honestly, we're going to be trading up with the Chiefs here because uh, they're going to be trying to get best player available, and why not? The Buccaneers are going to be like, well, we'll trade back. Uh, I mean... What, you don't need to get that many picks back in a row. So we'll uh, we'll trade this seventh round pick as well. And this is why the Chiefs are going to be able to move up and stuff. Um, they can definitely, I mean, I they can definitely use an interior defensive lineman in the first place. I thought they already had one. I would just say use another one. Tadaryl Slayton's fun out of Florida. He definitely makes an impact. I'm pretty sure he's good on the ground game as well as in the pass. So he's good all around dude. This is where you take a guy like this. So let's have some fun. Might as well. Uh, Browns, you don't need this at all. You have the best tackle duo in the country, but... Uh, might as well just go Tyler Vrabel for depth. We saw Chris Hubbard get injured today, and you know it sucks. Tyler Vrabel is going to be a high floor guy. He's going to be fun. He's going to add some juice to the offense, and you know it's going to make Baker feel a little bit more safe with seeing one of his guys go down, knowing that Vrabel is going to be able to come in and be able to kick some ass. BC's line is so good. Oh my god, we're we're not going to talk about it. Um, I mean, where do we go with you Seahawks? Uh, Jordan Williams is going to be the best guy. I'm not even going to discuss it. I would love to go line here, but we, we just got to get some extra defensive presence too because Russ can't... Russ got to get some help on that defense, man. Uh, for for the Titans, uh, where do we go with you guys? We could be getting a guy like Robert Rochelle at this point. Uh, Central Arkansas likes to shut down some very high-end people. Like uh, You saw Trey Lance just look like a complete idiot against UCA. And honestly, I, I'm digging that pick, man. I'm straight up digging it. Robert Rochelle is in like the 170s for me right now. So getting him at this value is like, that's perfectly fine to me. Robert Rochelle is going to be a great replacement for um, Desmond King, who's leaving. So it's, it's a win-win. Did we not just get Gayo Teote? Oh, that's for the, okay. We're good. We're good. Because um, that was for, what's his name? That was for the Cheeseheads, right? Yeah, that was for the Cheeseheads. Now, Bills. Um, I'm digging this idea. It's either Ventral Miller or Quoney Dang. I know that they might like Ventral Miller because they showed some tendency to go after Florida linebackers. Uh, I'm forgetting his name. It was so. It was a couple years ago, man. But I love this rangy linebacker out of Florida. He was so fast, big hitter, but he just he didn't turn out to be anything. Uh, but maybe that might just kick him to Quoney Dang, who deserves a lot of respect. All right. Um, I've seen a lot of tape on Quoney Dang, and he's really good. So he deserves to be put up in this category where he could get taken in the fifth round. Somebody that the Bills could definitely use on their squad. Now, Niners, this is where we can get some extra line help for you guys. Jack Anderson out of Texas Tech. If you want Hainsey as well, I don't think you need a center. You guys can correct me on that. Uh, we already got you guys a safety. Let's get you guys some extra help on the interior. Uh, I mean, Texas Tech, you think about, of course, like guys in your division, Cliff Kingsbury being from Texas Tech, having a lot of success. So 
I mean, he they run a very pro style offense nowadays, uh, and you know, it's gonna be a smooth transition to the NFL. I like Jack Anderson a lot as well, so it kind of like evens out there to be quite solid. And Lions, uh, we can get some extra tackle depth as well because I don't know how well Tyrell Crosby is doing. But Cole Van Lannon is declaring for the draft officially. Obina Eze, you guys are probably going to want me to go get him. But the dude is literally a snail, all right? Alaric Jackson and Cole Van Lannon, the only dudes I'm looking at. And Van Lannon's been doing a really good job so far. I'm going to definitely be taking him to sit behind Taylor Decker and possibly kick to right tackle if he needs to. But Cole Van Lannon's going to be doing as good of a job as he can do pretty much on the squad. Uh, Cheeseheads, we're back with you again. Again, let's get some tight end depth. Let's have a little bit of fun here. Trey McKitty's still on the board. Let's just rock it, man. Honestly, let's just rock it. Uh, Niners, could we go back and trade up again? Maybe. Maybe. But you know who could trade up? The Seahawks. Like, there's no there's no real needs apart from... I guess we can get a linebacker here uh, for the Buccaneers. Honestly, that wouldn't be a bad idea. When you're, you, when you're losing a rangy linebacker, you replace them with a rangy linebacker. Ventrell Miller's going to be going right here as well. And... I mean, Chiefs, where do we go with you guys? I hope the fifth round doesn't end too soon. Realistically, I want to trade back in with the Seahawks. Um, I mean, you guys could definitely get a backup tight end. Forrestal is, is a really good option for a guy who's a good dump-off option. Bushman, pretty solid as well. I like Lou Farrell. Um, Rooker is pretty damn good as well. But Jake Ferguson was not on the list to declare. So we're not taking him. He was not on the list to declare. I think he's staying. So that's definitely interesting. Peyton Hendershot is pretty good as well. We're actually going to be reaching. I don't think it's a reach. Uh, for uh, My Miller Forrestal, he's been pretty consistent over his entire time there with Kansas City. And again, I'm hoping that the draft is not about to end because, I mean, I like to do some more picks for y'all. But uh, Cowboys, this is where we can get some extra depth here. This is where we can get a guy like Abraham Lucas. Obina Eze, he can actually get his fat ass into shape when sitting behind Tyron Smith. This is going to be a fun option right here. So I, I like Abina Eze right there. He can fit into guard if you need him to. But I'm telling you guys, Abina Eze, this is where you take a guy who's six, uh, six foot eight, 315 pounds. He is so slow, man. He's out of Nigeria too. So uh, big respect to him for being able to kind of come from nothing and be able to do that. Cheeseheads, yeah, you. I, I, this is where it is. <laughs> All right, um, where the hell are the Seahawks at? Yeah, you guys are trading back again. I'm not doing like 1,800 picks for y'all. I'm going to be straight up. Uh, we're trading a next year pick as well. So we're going to trade a next year fourth. Oh, shit. Well, that's, that's annoying. So we're going to get a fifth and a seventh back for the Cheeseheads. Uh, I mean, uh, for the... I I'm bugging. The Seahawks. In order to select... Uh, who the hell are we selecting? <laughs> I, I totally forgot who the hell we're selecting. I'm going to be honest. Uh, we also... We do need some linemen, though. Uh, that's definitely going to be the case. So we're going to be looking at guys uh, like James Empey, Robert Hainsey here, uh, Trey Hill even. Uh, we can even look at Tristan Hodge or Morrissey here. But we need to get some line help. Uh, I, I have no idea why the hell I needed to trade back up, but I definitely wanted to. Uh, Hainsey was the best uh, center in the ACC because they joined the ACC. But Empey could be really fun too. We're going to be going with the Notre Dame guys because uh, you know me. I love my Notre Dame. Straight up, I love my Notre Dame. And with the Niners, I mean, again, I, we could go for an edge player to replace, uh, what's his name? I'm bugging again. Uh, yeah, we're going to be trace, uh, replacing Ford. D. Ford. Oh, my God. I knew his last name, but not his first. With Tyreek Smith. Definitely somebody who's like a high upside type of dude right there. Going to be fun to watch. Now, uh, Chiefs, where do we go with you guys? We can get some edge as well. Why not? Share the wealth. <laughs> Uh, but we're looking at guys like Patrick Johnson here who, I mean, he's a straight-up outside linebacker. He could be somebody who could work as, like, a pass-rushing middle linebacker. And, again, we're having some light dudes right here in, like, the, the 230 range. But, uh, I mean, shoot, where do we where do we rock? I mean, I guess he doesn't need to be off the edge. But I think this would be a fun spot for a guy like Big Cat Bryant. I mean, he plays a lot larger than his size says at 250. But, I mean, he'd be quite fun. So let me know what you guys think about that. I think Big Cat Bryant's a little bit underrated. He was supposed to be a second-round player at the start of the year. Uh, that was TDN's initial ranking, saying that he's a second-rounder. Definitely somebody who has a lot of potential at this spot. Now, Falcons, um, the more I watch you, the more I realize you need a quarterback. Might as well go for somebody who is honestly a little bit fun. And Malik Cunningham, I just did... Uh, I mean, we're ending off on a high note. I just did a scouting report on Malik Cunningham off tape, and I had him as an early fifth. So, um, of course, it goes back to create a new draft because the TDN loves to fuck over with me once they, like, do a bunch of stuff. 
after I take a couple of days to record for you guys. But however, doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I mean, it's going to be fun. It's like Mike Vick again. It's, it's just very interesting. It's going to be one hell of a pick. For whatever team that takes him, it's going to be the biggest boom or the biggest bust out there. So let me know what you guys think. I thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you on the far side. Peace.